Hello, welcome to this test or study guide on nuclear chemistry. The idea here is that these questions can prepare you for a unit test in nuclear chemistry, um, or you can use this as your test. Each of the titles at the top of the slide can point you to an individual video to get more information on this content. So for this specific slide and these questions, you would go back to my video 15.1 on types of radiation. Let's get started. All right, you have two questions to answer here. The first is, what are the four types of radiation and their symbols? And then which of them has the highest penetrating power? There are four types of nuclear radiation. We have alpha, beta positive, beta negative, and gamma. The symbol for alpha is an A that's a little scripty, kind of looks like a fish. And it has the same composition as a helium nucleus. I know this because it has a mass number of four and an atomic number of two. And this is a positive form of radiation because of those two protons that are flying through space. Because this is a very hefty mass wise form of radiation, it has a very low penetrating power. Then we move into beta positive and beta negative. They are um, of the same mass, which is negligible. It's coming out at zero. It's not actually zero. It is a, an actual particle, but it's close enough to zero, um, kind of like an electron. Then beta positive obviously is positive in nature and beta negative is negative in nature. The beta symbol is a B with a long back. I don't know what that part of the B is called. Um, and those two are obviously nearly identical aside from the difference in charge. Beta negative is effectively an electron. Then lastly, we have gamma radiation, which is literally just energy. There is no mass to gamma radiation. You'll also sometimes hear people talk about it as gamma rays. Because it has no mass at all, it has the highest penetrating power out of the four types of radiation. The next set of questions is on nuclear reactions. The questions are asking you to fill in the blanks on these reactions, but also to name the type of nuclear reaction. Okay, in the first case, we have uranium-238 becoming uranium-239, um, and this is due to the addition of a neutron the atomic number is not changing, so I would need a zero on the bottom, but because the uh, mass number is increasing by one, that means that I would need to have one in this space here. Um, nuclear reactions do actually require the number of particles to remain the same. So um, 238 plus one will give us the 239. This is a fission reaction, which is set off by the introduction of a neutron, probably in some type of particle accelerator or nuclear reaction. Up next, we have thorium-234 becoming protactinium-234. So that mass number there is not changing. So in my blank, I would need a zero on the top, which would be beta positive, beta negative, or gamma. Uh, we'll finish that off with more information where thorium 90 uh, with a, I'm sorry, an atomic number of 90 is becoming protactinium. That is a transmutation because we're changing the element, um, but we're having a protactinium 91. So in order to balance that, I would need the negative one on the bottom here for the beta. Um, so that would make it beta negative because 91 minus one would give us the 90. This is a natural transmutation because, um, there's only one reactant. This thorium is just becoming protactinium all on its own. It would be an artificial transmutation if we had something like this neutron being launched at our original reactant, and then it turns into a new element. Um, but because there's only one reactant here, that will make it a natural transmutation. It's just the thorium breaking down on its own. Then here, this is that artificial transmutation. We have the nitrogen with a mass number of 14, an atomic number of 7, and that is going to transform into a new element. It is making oxygen. Uh, the mass number is 17 plus the 1 on the hydrogen, which kind of just pops out. It's kind of like a byproduct. Um, so the total across the top in this case has to be 18. So 14 plus the four on the alpha particle will give me 18 across the top on both sides. And then we need nine in the bottom um, because we have the eight in the oxygen and the one in the hydrogen. So that will give us um, nine in the bottom. So on my reactant side, it'll be seven in the two, and that will make this an artificial transmutation. This next set of questions is some common uses of radioisotopes. So just what are the radioisotopes used for these purposes? 
Radioisotope commonly used to treat cancer would be cobalt-60, the isotope used to date previously living things like plants and dinosaurs and like stuff that's been dead for a very long time would be carbon-14. Um, to date rocks and geological formations such as mountains and valleys, that would be uranium-238. A smoke detector uses americium-241. And then finally, to treat thyroid disorders is going to be iodine-131. The final question is on half-lives. So the question here is, what is the mass, fraction, and percent remaining when 75 grams of potassium-42 decomposes over 61.8 hours? Across the top, we are looking at the number of hours. So we always are going to begin at time equals zero, which means right now. And the half-life of potassium-42, you would have to look it up, and it is 12.36 hours. So for each half-life from um, one step to the next, I am adding 12.36 because that's the amount of time that passes. And then in that amount of time, half of that sample would have broken down. Um, so that's what's going across the top. So what I like to do is start at zero and then add 12.36 over and over and over again until I get to the time that the question is asking about. Now we were asked to solve for the mass, the fraction, and the percent. I kind of swapped these a little bit, but that's all right. Um, to begin, I have my 75 grams. And of course, because it's a half-life, you have to cut this value in half every single half-life that passes. So this would be 75, cut it in half, 37.5, cut it in half, 18.75, cut it in half, cut it in half, cut it in half, cut it in half. You get down to 2.344 grams of K42 left after the 61.8 hours. When it comes to the percent, we are beginning with 100% and every half-life, you cut that in half. So you would cut it in half and 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 cut it in half until you got down to 3.125%. And then for the fraction, of course, you're going to begin with a whole one over one, and then you would cut that in half every single half-life. Um, so when it comes to dividing fractions, you just cut the denominator in half, or really you double it because that's effectively the same thing. So one out of two, then one fourth, then an eighth, a sixteenth, and then finally a thirty second. <laughs> All right. That is everything. We did it. We did it. We finished the course. Okay. Um, from this point forward, I will be doing some practice questions on this channel so that you can get a little bit more um, into it and see how chemistry really works. So make sure that you subscribe so that you don't miss those practice videos. Feel free to go back and look at any of the old videos to get refreshers. If you have any questions on this video, of course, leave it in the comment section below the video, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.